the situation with Hunter Biden. We've got information now as to really what was bothering the judge. Uh, there was some thought that it was a, basically a disagreement, Logan, between the prosecutors and defense lawyers. But now that we've got seen excerpts of the transcript, the judge said, what is the precedent for this kind of basically sweetheart deal? And the, the U.S. attorney that's in charge of the case said, uh, basically, there is none. Here's the exact question. And you don't have any precedent for that, right? Mr. Wise, no, Your Honor. Do you have any authority, the judge then asked, uh, the court uh, has ever accepted that or said that they would do that? This is talking about how they were going to handle this gun charge, which was the felony, remember. No, Your Honor, this was crafted to suit the facts and circumstances. And by the way, that raises a big issue. That what are they, what are they, He's supposed to be equal justice under the law, which of course includes facts and circumstances, but you start wondering, do they mean by facts and circumstances because it's the vice president's son? I don't know if that's what, what they meant, but that's certainly what was said here. What you had was a United States district judge doing her duty and doing her obligation by asking the tough, hard questions about what's this plea deal about and what's really at the bottom of it. And once that happened, it unraveled. This is what you need to focus on. And this shows you the kind of two-tiered system of justice we talk about. At one point, the judge described the plea agreement as, quote, not standard. Not what I normally see, possibly unconstitutional, without legal precedent, and potentially, quote, not worth the paper it is printed on. The judge eventually said, um, you are saying, just rubber stamp the agreement. I'm not in a position to accept or reject it. I need to defer. That's what they. That's what the judge said of what the both parties, the government prosecutors, the United States Department of Justice, and Hunter Biden's lawyers received from the judge. So this was very different as it was portrayed coming out of the media yesterday as to what actually transpired here. It's a very different situation. Yeah, I mean, we were hearing it in real time yesterday, and now we've had a little bit of time to sort of break it all down and learn a little bit more about what actually went down. Judge Narika also zeroed in on a central component of the deal, and that was a paragraph that was offering Hunter Biden broad immunity from prosecution, basically in perpetuity, uh, for a range of matters scrutinized by the Justice Department during this five-year investigation. The judge, Andy, questioned, and this is interesting, why prosecutors had written it in a way that gave her no legal authority to reject it. In other words, there was not a situation where the judge under this agreement could say, you know what, I think that that is incorrect. So she just rejected the Once that plea, if it was executed like that, the judge would be done and over with the case. No, no probation, no nothing. She rejected all of that, too. She wanted to know what her constitutional authority was. She did not uh, agree to a binding negotiated plea. That's basically what this is about. They tried to bind the judge to a negotiated agreement that they had worked out among themselves to give Hunter Biden a pass basically on two misdemeanor charges and immunity and non-prosecution for the rest of his life on everything that the Justice Department has been looking at him for years. And the judge was not having any part in, in that sort of thing. So what's the next step? So the judge said, listen, come back. I want you to brief these issues because she wants to make sure she has authority to do any of this. And they will. My, my prediction is there will be a plea reached in the next two to six weeks. And there will still be a plea. Uh, and I do not think this case is going to trial. He entered a not guilty plea, but and I don't believe there's going to be other investigations on this. Maybe there will be, but I, I just don't see it. They, they always say that. They say that because then the, the U.S. attorney can get up and say, oh, we have an ongoing investigation, Congress. I can't talk to you about it. That's exactly what this is, Logan. Yeah. So he says that, and, you know, there's so many confusing and, and conflicting statements out there about what Weiss's, this is the U.S. attorney's authority, was or wasn't. Could he, was it unlimited? Could he bring it in other jurisdictions? He said, you got FBI and IRS agents saying he said, no, he could not. He said, yes, he could in a letter to the to Jim Jordan. They're going to put him on the stand and try to get some answers to that. You won't get answers on specifics because the specifics are going to be as it relates to a particular case.